Sweet School on RealArtCulture.com is brought to you by Syngenta Canada, Alberta Wheat Commission, and CNM Seeds. Welcome to Real Agriculture's Wheat School Series. I'm Kara Oosteros. Today we have with us Haley Catton. Haley, how's it going? It's going great. How about you? Good. So can you tell me a bit about what you do for Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada? Yes, for sure. Uh, so I'm a research scientist in cereal crop entomology at the Lethbridge Research and Development Center, which is part of Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada. And my job is to research, so generate new knowledge, to find out what the the main problems are that farmers are facing in terms of insects on cereals and to find out what the questions we have about those insects are and to look for answers. So can you tell me a bit about the research you've done with cereal leaf beetles? Yes, absolutely. So cereal leaf beetle is a fairly new pest of cereals to Alberta. So it was first found in Alberta in 2005 coming from uh, southern North America and originally from Europe actually. And cereal leaf beetle uh, is a beautiful small little jewel-like beetle. It's like uh, iridescent green and red and in the adult stage it eats the cereals but doesn't do much damage but it will lay the eggs in the spring on uh, developing cereal plants and those larvae hatch and can cause a lot of defoliation damage to cereal crops. So can you tell me a bit about the life cycle of the cereal leaf beetle? Yes absolutely so uh, they overwinter as adults Right? So they're sleeping in the winter in the soil as adults, they wake up in the spring, they find another adult cereal leaf beetle, they mate, right? and then those females lay eggs on, on developing winter wheat and spring wheat plants. Those eggs hatch, those larvae start eating quite a bit, and um, that's when the defoliation damage can really happen is in the springtime. Well, I should say more like June, uh, when the larvae are feeding. And eventually those larvae will feed enough that they will mature and pupate, so go under metamorphosis and become a new generation of adults that will overwinter the next winter and the cycle repeats and repeats. So what have you found as far as thresholds go? Right, so what we know about cereal leaf beetle is based on literature from like the 1970s, 80s, 90s uh, in winter wheat in the southern US and they've developed an economic threshold of one larva per flag leaf. Uh, anything less than one larva per flag leaf not worth spraying for. Anything more than one larva per flag leaf then yeah it may be worth the while to spray. So we uh, were looking to see if those numbers matched up with what we see here in the prairies. So we've done some cage experiments, we've done some plot work, and uh, we were never even able to achieve one larva per flag leaf, despite dumping like 44 beetles per square meter in cages. We could never even get to one larva per flag leaf, and we didn't see a, a decrease in plant biomass. So we think that um, that economic threshold probably would stand here for the prairies. We have no reason to believe it wouldn't, based on our research. So it, I don't think anybody would actually, it would be very rare, I should say, to see a larva on every single plant. So, so when producers are scouting for this larva, what does it actually look like? Yeah, it looks uh, kind of like a slug, actually. So the larva themselves are yellow, but you don't really see the yellow color because they cover themselves up with their own feces. Like they call it a fecal backpack or a fecal coat. So the first thing you may see if you're walking through a field, maybe even scouting for something else, is maybe streaks of what we call frass, insect poop, on the pants, right? And you're like, oh, what are all these streaks on my pants, right? And then you might look around and you see like little slug, slug-like things on, uh, on the leaves. And at what stage, uh, crop stage, do you typically see that larva? It could be any time there's leaves, right? So um, depending if it's spring wheat or winter wheat, it, it'll be at the tailoring stage. Uh, like I was mentioning, the most damaging um, defoliation is on the flag leaf, so that's when you really need to look for it because uh, the flag leaf contributes the most to yield. Anything else you'd like to add? Uh, you can also uh, scout with a sweep net. So we, we, we do that if you see uh, sweep netting. You can find adults, you can find larvae that way. And you can also scout by looking for the long striped damage on the leaves. So there's almost nothing else that would make a long uh, feeding damage on the leaf. So the adults will chew right through the leaf, making a window but the larva will only chew the top part of the leaf, so, so it's kind of white looking stripes. The only other thing that might be, if you see that damage, might be slugs. So um, you have to see if you can actually find the larva in action. And uh, one other thing I want to mention is that there's a biocontrol agent for cereal leaf beetle that is pretty amazing, and we think it's what's keeping the cereal leaf beetle densities low on the prairies. It's a little wasp that lays its eggs in the cereal leaf beetle larva and, and kills them. So. Yep. 
And what does this wasp actually look like? It's tiny. It's tiny. It's only a couple millimeters long. Little tiny black wasp. You'd never know it if you didn't have a trained eye to see it. And um, that's one of the reasons we don't recommend spraying, right? Because when you spray out the cereal leaf beetles, you're spraying out its natural enemies, which allows for a pest bounce back. Okay, awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.